Hello, welcome to another episode of Seeing Live. I'm calling on Noir, and I'm here to cut through the media's moronic misinformation about guns, as usual. And one of my partners in crime, who helps me slay the anti-gun dragons of the world, is my good friend, Jen Jakes. What's going on, Jen? I'm slaying dragons up here in Wisco. Pretty good. Really? Okay, okay, okay. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> we call it, is, that, is, that, is that is that a formal shortening of Wisconsin, Wisco? Uh, or, did, or did you Waller just make that it, up? No, we call it Wisco all the time. We're like really? Wisco women and Wisco drinking and yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever hear me say Wisco, but, I, but I'll let you have it. Thank you. It's Wisco <laughs> whiskey. Wisco yeah. whiskey. I will say Whis that. I will say that. Just sheerly based on the strength of Wisco, of whiskey. Well, we're a big drinking state, so. Yeah, I know. I've met you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably you know, no, 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 no. You know what's funny? What's funny? No, it's not even you being the consumer of whiskey. It's you being the uh, enabler of said people consuming I whiskey. I encourage people. Well, yeah, to uh, use whatever euphemism you want. <laughs> you still try to uh, force me to fall off. Does it fall off the wagon or does it get back on the wagon? I'm confused. I would never. Well, I was probably trying to get you to come back on, on a wagon with me. Like, come on, you can ride my little red wagon. Let's go. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So tell us, tell us about this new wave of Chinese travelers. Hey, I think this is pretty cool. You know, you can't have guns in China, of course. Mm -hmm. Even replica guns are being viewed as taboo, and you can get in a lot of trouble for them. And one Chinese man took it upon himself to say, hey, supply and demand, I'm going to make a business out of this, and I'm going to have a tourism company that flies Chinese citizens to Florida so that they can shoot real American guns, not where they're welded to a bench. <laughs> or anything, like you'll have the freedom to actually shoot guns. I love it. I think it's smart. I, I, I would I agree with you wholeheartedly. I find that there's so much irony involved in that though. Um, know. You know, and then also it kind of like makes you realize how much you take for granted. Like they're flying across the world to shoot. Right, and this is shoot, literally to gonna be a once in a lifetime experience for them. Yeah. And, and this guy is even going so far as to build his own gun range in Florida just for just for Chinese, well, probably not just for, but yeah. for that purpose, to fill that need. And I love it, absolutely love it. I, I do too, it's, but it's still kind of sad. It is, <laughs> and it's, it's interesting that in his shop in Beijing, China, mm -hmm. they have t-shirts with slogans about the Second Amendment. Really? And they have holsters and all kinds of stuff in this shop that he owns. And yet, they don't have the Second Amendment. They don't have the right to keep and bear arms. They can't even shoot guns. And, and it's hard to even get replica guns. I, and I they reading, love our ahead. culture. Yeah, I know. I know. I've, I've seen. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, um, I've, I've, it's, it's crazy because, I mean, in, even in the article, I think you, you quoted him, and he was basically saying, um, you know, in China, you can't own a gun because the government wanted to squelch any attempts at, up, at an uprising. Um, right. Well, that's what gun control is all about, isn't it? It's weird because, you know, so many of these other people are like, we should be like the other countries. You see what they do? And it's like, well, the other countries don't largely allow their people to live freely. Um, there's this thing about freedom that they're kind of against. Um, but you but they still use them as a marker for where they want America, what, Amer right. what, what they want America to become. Um, and if anything, that idea, that notion of, well, we don't want you to have guns because we want to, don't want you to have the ability to uprise. Comp it, I, I can't think of anything m more that flies in the face of everything that the Second Amendment stands for. So it's, it's just interesting hearing that perspective from someone who has lived there and let, let the other side tell it. You know, everybody there agrees with the idea of no one being able to have firearms yet. Yeah, well, I also think it's kind of pathetic that we have Americans Mm. who can't see the value and the beauty in our Second Amendment, and there are Chinese citizens who do. Yeah. How messed up is that? Well, you know, if you really think about it, though, it's, it's you know, it's hard. Maybe it, I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay? Maybe it's easier because they're living in a country where they don't have it, and then you have people here who live in a country where they have it but aren't really, they've had it for so long that they don't even realize the benefit of having it until it's right. taken away. 
And so they feel like they don't need it. Maybe it's like uh, Flint, Michigan having clean water for so long. And all of a sudden, now that they don't have clean water coming out of their faucets, wow, you realize how much you take it for granted. Touche. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Touche. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of an alternative argument for that. And um, when you put it like okay. that, I don't... Yeah. Then one. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but, I mean that's, that's... But see, that's not fair because I was arguing a moronic position. So... All right, next time I'll argue the moronic position. <laughs> you can have enough. one up on me. <laughs> so um, you, you wrote about uh, our buddy Dana and the New York Times. Let's take a look at that video really quick. We the people have had it. We've had it with your narratives, your propaganda, your fake news. We've had it with your constant protection of your Democrat overlords, your refusal to acknowledge any truth that upsets the fragile construct that you believe is real life. And we've had it with your pretentious tone deaf assertion that you are in any way truth or fact based journalism. Consider this the shot across your proverbial bow. We're going to fisk the New York Times and find out just what deep rich means to this old gray hag, this untrustworthy, dishonest rag that has subsisted on the welfare of mediocrity for one, two, three more decades. We're going to laser focus on your so-called honest pursuit of truth. In short, we're coming for you. Man, Dana seems so happy in that video. I need a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dana. We're good friends. And I got to tell you, I never want to be on her bad side. And I mm. never want to get like her mommy stare <laughs> because, whoa, look out. But she's got a point. You know what? New York Times. Hey, if you want to print lies and you want to go off on your gun control narrative, go for it. But expect there to be a retaliation of truth. Yeah, it's it's I go on the soapbox pretty regularly about just the, the, the massive amount of misinformation put out there by the mass media and them taking advantage of the fact that they know a lot of people don't follow the debate when it comes to firearms. And they take advantage of that by putting out just a, a, a ton of misinformation, whether deliberately or, or recklessly or right. um, just incompetently. Pick, pick your adjective. Don't care. Either All three of them suck. <laughs> so, um, right. you know, and, and we live in a time now where we legitimately cannot trust our own mainstream media. And, and, it, and the, the funny thing about it is you hear people all the time, it's like, oh, okay, okay, mainstream media, mainstream media, mainstream media. But I'm like, come on, like, you got to think about how important that is considering, like, I, I, I'm, I'm in a position where I can, I can learn about the Second Amendment. I, I'm in the business of being aware of everything that goes on with it. But there are a lot of people who work full-time jobs, take care of kids, do all of these things. They don't have time to, to keep a, a, be abreast with everything that has to do with the Second Amendment. Um, well, the bottom line is readers should not have to fact check all these reports. And, and there's a reason that we have journalists out there. That is mm -hmm. to research and report facts. That's it. And, you know, my daughter is on her middle school newspaper team. Uh -huh. And I tell her all the time, honey, research, research, research. You always have to fact check. I don't care. You get three different sources. If you think something is fishy, dig into it. If you think something is true, dig into that. Never stop seeking the truth. No, and you're absolutely right. And, and you know what? I, I want to say, like, an ide in an ideal world, I would, I would love to be able to just turn on the TV and then just pick one channel and, you know, say, hey, this is where I'm going to get my information from because they're right. always right, they're objective, and this is all I need to know. But, you know, by and large, I always find myself listening to one station, then literally back door and turning it to the other station, I watching the them for thing. a little bit. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. then going online, finding articles, reading Doing the my articles. my own research. I like, it's, it's just like research. I was like, gosh, I thought I got out of law school a long time ago. And, and, but they're, they're forcing me now to go back into the same mode that I was when I was in school. Well, um, you know, their failure to do their job is what bred people like me, bloggers, which is who true. were just sick and tired of reading the same old crud yeah. and said, you know what, I have a better voice than half of these idiots out there reporting the news, so I'm going to start blogging. And, you know, we're kind of taking over. You know, you know kind of, kind of is an understatement. I, it, Can you remember the last time you read a newspaper? What is a newspaper? Thank you. I actually was couponing, and the only thing I do is like 
pull out the answers. I coupon. I'm not going to lie. That is the whitest thing you've ever said. <laughs> and you've been on the show quite a bit. <laughs> Imagine me at 5.30 a.m. in a grocery store line. Hold on, I got my coupons. Hold on, I got my coupons. Hang on. It's, it's adorable. I'm literally like this 24-7. And with coupons, it's even funner. Oh, God. I can, I can actually legitimately see you with your coupons in, uh, in, in the grocery store. For real. Yeah. It's fun. I have a little binder and everything. You should, start, you anyway. should, you should, start, you should start vlogging. <gasps> about about couponing, the tactic the, the tactical couponer. Oh, see, if I had more time, <laughs> I would totally do that. Now, wouldn't it be great if you had coupons for ammo? Yes. Thankfully, I get discounts from, <laughs> for the media, <laughs> or I would really be just. That would just be a death spiral for me. That would be a rabbit hole I would never recover from. Yeah, like, for real. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I don't know if I just have the patience to be a couponer, though. It takes a lot. Well, here's what I tell my girls. Cut out things that you see mommy buy. <laughs> <laughs> Got things oh, so you have like right. a little, you have like a little coupon sweat sweatshop. Yeah, that's what that's my I'm, I'm picture game now. See, that's what you do. See, I'm thinking you're sitting there toiling over these newspaper clippings <laughs> and actually, no, here you are. You, you can do a lot of them online now too. You can virtually clip them. You can even clip coupons on Amazon. I am getting way off topic right now, yeah, but fine. I'm just I'm, telling I'm, you, I'm, it's I'm, very <laughs> exciting when you can save money. I'm enabling you, so you're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're even now. But, okay, fair enough. And good thing because annual meetings, they're coming up. They are. Yeah, I'm staying away from you. I'm bringing cheese curds. You have to come and Cheese curds? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't. Hi, right here. <laughs> okay, so we have cheese curds in our airport, and I'm taking a direct flight. Thank you, Delta. Woohoo! Well, you're and not flying United? I don't fly United. Why? You're not Asian. <laughs> not Asian, but I got really tired of being stranded in Chicago. <laughs> so I stopped flying United. That was a good joke. <laughs> no, I'm flying direct to Atlanta. So I will have my little cow cooler. Mm -hmm. I have like an insulated bag that looks like a cow filled with cheese curds. <laughs> that I will take on the plane with me okay. if they, you know, if they, if they don't, yeah, confiscate them. I love Delta. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone. I think I've, I've, I think I've said my piece for the day. <laughs> I just need to breathe. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a good break. If we come back, we'll talk some more with Jen.